This is a great example of a question where if you are thinking strategically about the SAT, your method for this is obvious. Now, most of you are not thinking strategically. You're just thinking about it as a math test. So you're going to look at this and be like, oh, it's algebra. I've got to FOIL. I've got to distribute. I've got to do all these things. And you can solve that way. I'm not even going to do it, though, because when I look at this, I see that I have equations. I see that my x doesn't matter. So I'm thinking, huh, maybe I can make up a number for x. Maybe I can arithmetize and see how this equation changes without having to deal with all of the letters. I can just use numbers. Now, the reason that x equals zero would be so awesome to use here. First of all, it's easy to use no matter what because it gets rid of a lot of stuff. But also look at these answer choices. I know how zero works. What it's going to do is it's going to knock out anything with an x, meaning all these x to the fourths will just be zero to the fourth. Those will go away. But so will all these pieces, right? Because those are also going to be x zero squared. So that just gets rid of all of these. Meaning the only thing that matters in all of these answer choices is the last number. Now I'm confident with that because I arithmetize so much, I can see that once I just plug in zero, since all four of these numbers are different, there is no chance of me getting multiple answers to work. It's going to work the first time if I pick zero. So if you're thinking strategically, this is obvious to you and you're instantly going to go into that. If algebra is your default, well, then you're going to do a lot of algebra for no reason. Because watch, if we plug in zero, right, what's going to happen? This is going to go away. We're going to have 11 squared plus, well, this goes away. So that's negative five. And this goes away. So that's five. Right, so okay, 121 minus 25, you could get the calculator here. It's gonna be 96, I believe. Yep, and that's it. What answer has 96? B, done. So I talked for a while before I did this, but otherwise this would have been a 10 second question because I'm always thinking, can I arithmetize? Basically, can I plug points into equations? If I have equations but no points, that's probably a good sign I can arithmetize. And here it worked out so perfectly. Even if it, it didn't have this kind of like sense that it was gonna work out perfectly, I might have done it anyway and then worried about if it didn't and used like a number like one to go from there because this has got um, distribution, foiling, combining like terms, a lot of algebra here, easy to mess up. And I, I guarantee that if we do mess it up, one of these answer choices will kind of look like the right answer. And so we won't know that we messed it up. That's how the SAT works. We're not into the really hard part of this module yet, but we're still at a point where we can make decisions about what's efficient and what's gonna make us uh, most likely to get the question right. And so anything you can do to decrease careless mistakes is worth doing. So think strategically. Plug points into equations has to be on your mind throughout the entire math section so that you're ready to handle things in an easy way when they're easy, but also that you're prepared when things get harder so that you don't make careless mistakes and you don't get stumped by questions that look crazy. If you got points, you got equations, plug them in. If you don't have points, maybe you can make them up, maybe you can arithmetize just like I did here.